Hi everybody, Tammy here. Welcome to my channel. So I haven't done a dolly going and coming video in quite a while. So I am reshaping my current collection of dolls and I thought I would share with you what I'm planning on doing, uh, what I'm in the middle of doing, and what I hope to see in the future as far as the dolls uh, that I'm collecting. Also, I'm going to talk a little bit about a difficult topic um, I actually was going to do a full on video about it, but I thought instead I would maybe address it while I'm talking about uh, my doll collection in general and how it's changing right now. And that is the idea of uh, doll snobbery. <laughs> All right. I recently saw a video, in fact, that was done very well. Um, it's actually been up for about a year, but I guess I missed it somehow by Dory's Dollies. I will try to remember to link it in the description box below. Um, but definitely check out Dory's channel. It's an excellent channel. She's very knowledgeable. And she did a video, like I said, about a year ago. And she was particularly talking about, more specifically, um, dolls that I don't collect, which are the Reborn dolls. But she was talking about doll snobbery. And this is something I'm kind of running into now uh, when I recently purchased um, a AliExpress mini fee. So before I jump into the whole doll snobbery discussion, which is kind of related to dolls that are coming, um, first I'm going to talk about dolls that are going. And first of all, I will be getting, um, sending on its way, I, w I hate to say getting rid of, I will be sending dolls on their, on their way to their new homes, including a collection of Barbie extras. I've already sold one. Um, I have, I actually had the first five Barbie extras and they're new in box and I had them on display for a while, but you know, I don't know, just something didn't compel me to take them out. And finally, after a while, if I don't take a doll out of a box, I feel like it's time to let, let them go. And so, um, I have the four other ones listed in, um, eBay. I have, I do have eBay listings now and, um, I don't have a real shop over there yet, but I'm, I'm contemplating that depending on how things go. So I have the, uh, Barbie extras, over there. And then along with them, I'm also sending Max from a Girl for All Time collection on his way. He is a sweet doll, but I don't have a lot of boy dolls and I like them, but um, he's just kind of sat on my shelf, hasn't had a lot of attention. I did buy him a little shirt, which I will include um, with purchase of this doll along with his stock clothing, but I thought it was time to let him go as well. Some other Barbies I am also selling are the uh, remake of the 1971 Malibu Barbie uh, dolls. Again, they're also new in box. I actually purchased two of these because I love them so much. And I had thought, oh, I'm going to open a box and then keep a box, you know, new in box, keep them in their box. So I'll have one to, one to open, one to, one to keep. But I have decided to let one of them go. Um, I never even opened one, so I have two new in box, and I was like, girl, this is stupid. Just sell one. So I'm going to be, oh, that's also on eBay. And then I have um, a Rainbow High doll. She's Daria uh, Roslin. Uh, she also is new in box. She's very cute, but again, for whatever reason, I never opened her. She's got beautiful dark skin, wonderful pink um, shades of, of hair. Uh, but I'm going to be also including her um, in a listing over on eBay. Finally, the last doll I am letting go uh, right now is my Elegant Ellie. She is a stock Blythe doll, new in box. I have right now all of the Takara tan or dark skin dolls that were ever made by Takara. And she is part of that collection. But... I don't know. Again, this is one of those times where, you know, I never took her out of the box and I kind of feel some of the reason why I bought her was because I was, was under this pressure to have all the tan dolls. And, um, I just, you know, so I have her, I like her, I'm not in love with her and I know somebody out there would probably really like her. So I am also, um, going to be letting her go, uh, again, is uh, listing her on eBay. So, as I am letting dolls go, I am now looking at dolls and uh, planning and plotting to buy new dolls. One doll I actually already purchased and I'm waiting for her to show up here. Um, I bought her from directly from Good Smile Company and she is Surrey Sustainable. Yes, 
I have held out on this doll, but I have to say, as soon as I saw her when she was first released, I really liked her. And it's not just because she's, you know, got the, the tan skin. I think she's supposed to be latte skin tone. It's not just because of that. I just thought she was cute. Everything about her, I really, really like. And since I, like I said, I'm rethinking some of my collection and I thought, you know, if I'm letting dolls go, then that means I feel okay about bringing new dolls into the collection. And she is one of those. Now the next group of dolls I'm talking about right now when I record this are not available in the United States, but I am keeping my eyes out for them. I guess from what I've heard, they are available in Australia according to a video by Cute Play by Soosh, um, S-O-O-S-H, that's a video on YouTube, that's a, a YouTube creator. She posted a video where she showed the Bambi doll. And from what I've read online, the next, the second series of these ILY uh, Forever Disney dolls are going to include four more dolls, Bambi, uh, Mickey Mouse, Stitch, and Ursula. And of course, they're not those exact dolls. It's just, you know, if you know about these dolls, it's just they're inspired by those characters. So Peachy Reviews, also a very, very popular YouTube channel, has uh, reviewed these dolls. And so you can, you know, head over to that channel, Peachy Reviews, to see more about them. I just have some screenshots here. Uh, you can't really find a lot about these online, so I just did some screen captures. I don't know which of these dolls I'm going to get. Um, Bambi is definitely, the Bambi, you know, inspired one is definitely interesting to me. Um, also the Ursula one, uh, well, they all are, okay. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to... Uh, March Payne Midlife Crisis. He gave me a heads up on Instagram about these dolls and also um, some of the fashion packs that look like they're going to be coming out. So really looking forward to those. Finally, another doll that I am looking to add to my collection is a legitimate stock mini fee. As you know, if you've been watching my channel, I recently purchased an AliExpress mini fee, which means it is a knockoff. And this kind of brings me to the point of the whole doll snobbery thing. I'm trying to learn more about BJDs. I have actually been fascinated with them for years, but I have to say the community to me generally is not as welcoming um, to newbies in the collection of BJDs as other doll um, groups are. And that's been a kind of a turnoff. Um, not all of us can, you know, afford to, to plop down hundreds of dollars for dolls. Um, and I mean hundreds and hundreds, actually. <laughs> okay. If not, if not thousands in some cases. And while I do some, I do have some high end dolls. I mean, I do have a couple of smart dolls. The thing with those dolls was when I was researching them, first of all, the, the community, the smart doll community seems a little bit more, um, warm, I guess I would say, comparatively speaking. And also Danny Chu has an amazing amount of information on the Smart Doll website. So I felt like I was able to do my research and feel confident when I did purchase, you know, the real Smart Dolls. Okay. So that I'm just not finding that when it comes to BJDs. In fact, I've, so far I've only found two places I could buy the real deal. There is the Denver Doll Emporium, um, that's in the United States, and I've heard good things about them before. However, when I look on their website, anything they have in stock already, I'm not at all interested in. Everything is super pale skin with big boobies. <laughs> that's, not, that's not my aesthetic at all. I prefer more of an athletic uh, build on a doll and, of course, darker skin tone. If I order from them, according to what I interpret from their website, it could be a seven month wait and anywhere from 500 to 700 plus dollars for the doll. And then of course there's all these disclaimers about something's wrong with the doll, too bad, so sad. As I continue on with my research about mini fees, the only other place that I am able to find to buy them new, and let me say one reason why I'm looking for new versus pre-owned is because there are so many fake ones out there that 
from what I can tell, it is extremely difficult, especially for somebody who is not as knowledgeable about the dolls, that I, I am not knowledgeable, I'm trying to be knowledgeable. And I think it would be very easy to get tricked into spending a lot of money on a doll that is not really um, a legitimate mini fee. So the only other place besides Denver Doll Emporium is the, the source, Fairyland Dolls, out of Korea. Again, when I go and look at their website though, there's all kinds of disclaimers, especially if I want to get a tan doll. Um, so, and that kind of brings me back to, you know, reasonings for getting um, a fake one. Yes, you don't know for sure what you're getting with the fake one when it comes to skin tone, like the, the one doll I did buy to me, she's not tan, but at least I didn't spend $800 on a doll that's not tan. <laughs> I spent $85 on a doll that's not tan. So, you know, the fact that there is some gray area there and the fact that they have all kinds of disclaimers on the Fairyland um, doll site about the tan dolls having, um, what do you call it, discoloration and um, patches of like rough patches on their their skin and that kind of thing. And again, saying, you know, if that's the case, and you get the doll like that, then too bad, so sad, that that gives me pause. However, I'm continuing to do my research and I still would really want to get um, a legitimate mini fee. In particular, I really like the Redina mold, the Redina face mold, um, A-line body, small, small chest. Um, I wouldn't even mind a cutie chest, um, but uh, with the magnetic hands and feet, like the whole, you know, enchilada kind of thing. And as I say this, you know, as someone who is trying to learn more about these dolls and in struggling with finding, you know, helpful information and dealing with, you know, a few people that made some snarky comments to me about buying a fake one, um, I'd like to just challenge those BJD folks out there who feel like they need to, you know, get snobby <laughs> with some people, <laughs> aka me, <laughs> and other people buying fake ones, rather than do that, I would say I challenge you to pick up the torch and be our light and enlighten us, educate us, you know, help us out here. If we want to buy a doll that is a real mini fee, for example, or any of the other fairyland type dolls, you know, help, help us interpret what they say on their website help us, um, you know, don't just put out there, oh, well, you shouldn't pick, you know, buy a fake one because it's not fair to the artist. We need a little bit more than that. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm saying. Um, try to be part of the solution versus a uh, judgy, judgy finger pointer. All right, so I'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much. I'd love to hear your thoughts about any of these dolls that I mentioned, either the ones that are going or the ones that are coming. What dolls are you looking to add to your collection? As usual, I appreciate a thumbs up. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notifications. Have a wonderful dolly day. Bye-bye.